state machines are here to help us with the current state of, for example, our character, or maybe an enemy, or whatever else you would like to have in your game. And we can make them in many different ways. You could, for example, base them on the node system. So you would have to create a simple node that is your state machine, and below you could add a few states, spread the logic between two separate files, and that is a great approach to it. But here in this video, I want to explain how a very simple and easy to understand state machine could be implemented in your game. So just be aware that it's not the best approach, but in my opinion, for many simple projects, it should be enough. So on my character body 2D, I've got a script. And here in the script, I simply extend character body 2D, add a movement, because here in this file I also have a movement logic for my character, character direction, and here is the start of our state machine. I declare the states with enum, and I only got two states, idle and move. Idle state will be when our character is not moving, we can add a simple animation to it, in my case it's only one frame, when our character is facing downward and another state that is called move. And no matter the direction, I simply want to know when my character is moving. Nothing more, nothing less. Current state, in my case, it's idle. That's the default state that our character will have at the start of the game. You should have function physics process, where we've got delta. I of course got here move and slide, that's the Godot function that lets us to create a movement system. But those two are important for our state machine. Handle state transitions and perform state actions. In the first one, we simply focus on transitioning between states. So yeah, in this function, the only logic that I want to have is the logic that helps me determine which state my character should be in at the current moment. So the first input checks if input is action pressed UI left or UI right, UI up and UI down. Those are the arrows on your keyboard. So when one of those is clicked, then my current state is going to change to states dot move and else it should change back to idle. And below we've got function perform state actions where we would like to have a logic for our character in many different states. So to summarize this up, handle state transitions should only change the current state and perform state actions will handle the logic of this current step. So here I've got match current state with the list of the states and logic that's connected to them. Let's focus on states.idle. So when my character is in the idle state, I change his velocity to move towards zero because he needs to stop somehow. And animated sprite to the dot animation to idle, which is here a simple one frame of animation. And above states.move, where is the logic for top down movement? But I explain in details this logic in the video that it's in the top right corner. In the state move, my character direction x and y will be based on the key that was pressed by the player. And later, based on that character direction, I simply change the animation, walk left, right, up and down. And as the last step, velocity will equal character direction, movement speed and delta. And this logic lets our character to move and get back to idle when we don't press any button. And if I want to add more states, then I would simply add another state here, for example jumping, but it's top-down game which could be funny to make, but yeah, let's stick to jumping. So here in the function handle state transitions, I will have to add another if statement that will help me determine if the character should be in the jumping state. And if yes, then here in the perform state actions, I will add another state to jumping, where for example I would block the player controls while he's in the air and add the animation jumping. And you could do that with almost any state you imagine. That state machine will help us to avoid long repetitive conditions and get our code more organized. But remember that it's a very simplified version that you can implement in a few minutes. So if your game is very simple, then that could be enough. Let me know in the comment if this state machine could be helpful for your project. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for your time and bye for now.